What's going on guys? Today we're here with the Finn Plus Smart Home Water Shutoff System. What this is, is it allows you to have remote, more, remote monitoring of your water coming into your house um, via if you have city water or if you have well water. We have well water at my house, so we're able to control the pressure as well as turn off the well whenever we want. But I wanted to get this because it's a good backup to have as well as I mostly wanted it for its water tracking capabilities so that we can see how much water we're using. Um, from what I found online, there's two main competitors. I'd say you have the Finn and you have the Flow by Moen. The Flow by Moen requires you to have a subscription fee, which wasn't crazy expensive, it was $5 a month. But over time that'll add up and we plan to have this in our house for many, many, many years. Um, this was, I believe, about $200 more, it was $6.99. But I also thought that this had a better interface from what I was looking online with the data it shows you and to me it seemed like a better bet not paying the subscription fee. So what this does is it's essentially a remote controlled ball valve um, for the most part that it'll let you turn off the water coming into your house remotely as well as it has smart it has smart properties that it can detect it can determine it can try to detect a leak in your house essentially. Um, it measures the vibrations in the water and via those vibrations, this can tell whether you have a faucet open, whether it's a toilet running, whether it's irrigation, a dryer, uh, not a dryer, sorry, a washing machine, because those all have sort of their own signature when there's water running to them, the water will vibrate differently. So that's what this does. Now that's also an advantage over the Moen. The Moen made you pay for that feature. Well, that feature is included in this. There's no subscription fee whatsoever. So we're gonna jump into an unboxing of what we got here. And then we're gonna go and show you how we're gonna hook it up. I'm not sure that I'll be able to hook it up on my own um, because of the tools we might need to make it work, but we'll see if I can do it on my own. So what we've got here is, this is the box that came in, I got it from Amazon. I'll have a link in the description to this. Um, and here we go. So, comes with some papers, uh, installation guide, these are I don't want to rip any of that off yet. I mostly just want to see what we've got in the box. This tells you how to install it, the orientation. So it's supposed to be horizontal against the wall. And then here is the actual unit itself. Heavier than I expected, for sure. Here's the power plug is fixed. So the orientation will have to be like this. And like I mentioned, we're on a well system. So in some ways, this has an advantage and a disadvantage for us. The advantage is that, yes, it is a remote water shutoff, but something you have to consider with that is that our well, if you don't actually turn off the power to the well pump, it will continue to try and pump water. So for example, if I don't put this as close as I possibly can to where the well water line actually comes into the house, if it were to break between where the line is and where this actually is, it won't do anything to help because it will have cracked <laughs> between, it will have cracked between where it enters the house and where it actually gets to this. But if it theoretically crack if a pipe were to crack downstream from this then it would assist you so that's something you also have to keep in mind this that don't think this is going to absolutely save you but it's definitely something nice to have and like i said you can track your water usage um so it's not too big um let's see relative to the size of the hand got a pretty long power cord which is nice and then all of these this is an installer toolkit let's see what we got here zip ties I'm mostly curious to see what fittings they provide us with because they said they provide us with fittings. So, okay. These are the fittings that they gave us. I wanted to say they said these are three quarter inch fittings. They gave us two gaskets. So we're definitely gonna have to do a little bit of MacGyvering because the pipe that goes from my house to PVC and clearly these are not PVC and the pipe isn't threaded. So I'm gonna have to get some kind of adapter so we can get these on. But that shouldn't be too big of a problem. Um, I'm also, if you guys stick around, at the end of this, I'm gonna run through the app and show you all the features, but I just wanted to do a quick unboxing and talk about it real fast before we start to work on it. All right, so now we're moving on to the installation phase of this. Um, if you're not handy or you don't understand plumbing, I would definitely recommend you call a professional and install this because you don't wanna mess it up. So the first thing I did was I shut off the power to our well so that it actually stops pumping. And then the next thing I did was I shut off the valve, the main valve, and that is gonna stop all the water from the lines draining back into the system. But there is still some water in this pipe right now, so when I cut it, I have a bucket handy so they can drain into that. 
but what we're going to do before we do anything else is we're going to mark up the location of this fin. Now, if you see here, we want the pipe in line with these two. So that means that the fin's going to sit about here, but we've got to make up the space on the wall. So I'm either going to have to use a 2x4 or a 1x4. I brought a 1x4 down, and it doesn't look like a 1x4 is going to cut it, so I'm going to need a 2x4. 2x4 mounted on the wall, and then the bottom portion of this fin actually disconnects. It slides off, and then you can put screws through it to hold it in place so that the weight of this isn't just being supported by the pipe. So I'm going to get the 2x4 mounted in place where I plan to put this, and then we'll work on making up the fittings to hold this in place and get it connected to the pipe. All right, so as you can see, we now have the wood mounted on the wall. I had to use these Tapcon concrete screws as well as a 3 uh, masonry drill bit in order to drill into the cinder block. You won't be able to drill into it with just a regular drill bit. It has to be a masonry or concrete block, whatever, concrete drill bit, whatever you want to call it. So now that that's mounted in place, it's basically out of the center of this about even with the pipe. That makes it so this will be able to sit against the wall and as you can see now the pipe is directly in line with the fittings here so that the flow path we're not going to be bending this pipe at all basically to be able to sit perfect so what i'm going to do now is we're going to have to actually cut a section of this pipe out so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to hold this here and roughly see like okay that's what we need to cut out for starters i'm just going to cut enough so that i can mount this into place so it'll just slide up into place and then we're going to have to cut more in order to get the fittings in what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make those cuts and then I'm going to have a bucket underneath because there is definitely going to be a little bit of water left in this pipe. I already shut it off, but there's still some in here because we can't drain what's in here. So I have a bucket underneath and you don't make a mess on the floor. Okay, so as you can see, we've cut out our section of pipe. This is just for starters. We're going to have to cut back more. But what I wanted to explain next is the fittings that we're going to be using. So the fittings that are provided are these right here and they're three quarter inch fittings, um, three quarter inch to one inch fitting. And this end has NP, NPSM, or NPS fitting, as NPS threads. This end is NPT threads. So what that means is that if you wanted to try and use, my original thought was I'll use shark bite with a female on the end like this. Shark bite with a female on the end, one inch, because then I could go directly to the fin. But the problem with that is that this is a, this is a female one inch NPT threads, so we're gonna have to do a little bit of converting. So what I got is, because this is one inch pipe, now depending on what you have, you'll have to adjust accordingly. So we have one inch shark bite fittings. One of them is a female end and one of them is a male end. That's because that's all that was in stock. So I'm doing a little bit of improvising. Ideally, I guess the, the best way to do this would have been to get two um, shark bites with female ends. That way you don't have to do more conversions like I'm doing with the coupling. So we have, one one inch shark bite to a one inch female mpt then we have a reducer if you want to call it that so we have a one inch to a three quarters inch npt which that is then going to go to our coupling here which goes to our fin now on the other side of things what i'm doing is i have a male to male coupling same thing with the reducer but i have a one inch mpt one inch mpt male on the other end that's just because I couldn't get two females. So what we're going to do is we'll do this, then we'll do our coupling, and then that will go to our adapter that goes to the fin. So what, I'm, what you have to do now is you have to sort of mark it up. I'm going to get the fin in place, and then we're going to have to cut back a little bit on each side because, as you can tell, all these fittings, they take up a good amount of space. Um, just it, mocking it up, you're going to want to make sure you mock it up carefully, and then obviously once you've got it mocked up, you want to tighten everything down. So as you can see, this is just loosely fit um, and hand tight, but that adds a lot of distance. So we're going to have to take this pipe back a good amount of ways on both ends. And also what you want to do when you do make this up is you want to use thread pipe thread tape for sure. That way you can help prevent any leaks because even though you might crank this down as tight as possible, you want to make sure you put that on. And when you're applying that, you always go in the direction of the threads that way when you're screwing it in essentially, or you want to go the opposite direction. That way as you're screwing it in, you put the tape on this way, you screw in this way, that's so that it doesn't start to unwind on you. So I'm going to get the fin mounted with the mounting screws that they provided, and then these hooked up in place. Like I said, we're going to cut this back a little further, and once that's in place, we'll be ready to turn on the water and see how it's going to work. 
So here is the fin all hooked up. As you can see, everything's connected. Right now the blue light isn't on and something that I actually had to call Finn and talk to them about was that the blue light actually shuts off after a minute. It doesn't continuously stay on. There is a little blue button on this side and when you click that, then the light comes on. Now, right now there's no water flowing through the pipe, but if there was water flowing through the pipe, it would like sort of show, show you that. Pretend this is water, it'd be moving as well. Um, but it's all hooked up, no leaks, nothing this, so that's always good. So now I'm gonna move on to showing you guys the app and the different interfaces and such in the app. Okay, so now that we're done with the installation portion of the review, I wanna go through the actual app um, and I couldn't think of a better way to record this, so I'm just going to go through it on my iPad. Um, hopefully you guys will be able to see. This is the main screen that you have. Um, right now it's saying, hi Trevor, you have no alerts. If you had a potential alert, like it thought you had a leak, or sometimes what you'll get is a, a high usage warning. Um, typically I get that from, it's caused by the outdoor spigots when I'm running the hose or watering the grass or something like that. Um, so on the main screen up at the top here, we have the temperature, the pressure, and the flow rate. Um, the temperature is the temperature that's of the water going through the fin, and then the pressure that it's coming through at and how much we're flowing in gallons per minute. On the bottom down here, we have two options. We have run a plumbing check and see the water usage. If we go to notifications, I don't have any active notifications, but you can see all of these other notifications that are things that I popped up and take a look at. As you'll see, there's a lot of high flows, medium flows. Now, I guess a disclaimer for this is that I installed this specifically when we got, when we put down new grass seed on probably about an acre's worth of land. So we wanted to see, not so much in a conservative way, but we wanted to see how much water we were actually using. Um, whereas now we've, we're not watering that grass anymore. But when we were watering that grass, it was actually really neat to see how much water we were pulling out of our well um, and using because we were running the outdoor spigot with about two portable sprinklers nearly all day. So when you roll through the menu, you've got this on the left side and we've got the activity monitor, which is the main screen. We have plumbing check. Plumbing check I set to ran. You can choose, you can leave it to run whenever it feels like, or you can set when you want it to run. I set it to run between the hours of 4 and 5 a.m. That's because our sprinklers run between 12 a.m. and 2.30 a.m. And this thing, for some reason, constantly wanted to run at that time, and it was messing up the sprinklers because when it runs the plumbing check, it closes a valve in the actual fin so that it can test the pressure in the line. So what you're seeing here on the left is it's reading what the pressure either dropped to or did not drop to. This is how you can do sort of a leak detection test if, in your house because if you were noticing a massive drop in the PSI, you would have a leak somewhere in your system. It could be a leaky faucet, leaky shower head, anything like that. But as you can see, most of the time we don't lose more than one PSI. I mean, a lot of times we're losing like a tenth of a PSI or less. Um, so there's our plumbing check. It runs. Uh, between 4 and 5 a.m. We go to water use. So this is one of the water use screens. This is per month. So in the month of August, we've used 32,721 gallons to date. And you can see a daily breakdown of that as well. Some days have much bigger spikes. Now we have to add water to our pool sometimes, or we do manually water the grass if we notice the grass getting burnt out. That is going to be probably what causes the spikes. This page, this is about as detailed as this page is going to get. Um, but if you move to Water Use Plus, this is where it's cool and you can actually see the breakdown of the water usage by source. So, what we can see here is today we've used 1,811 gallons. 1,045 events means such things as if I open the faucet for five seconds and close it, we've had a thousand sort of events today. Now, I'm not totally sold on how accurate this is. Part of the problem with that is that this thing has to go through a learning process. And during the learning process, we were running our outdoor spigots at open all the time. So it's it was very sort of confusing, I suppose, for this machine to, or for the fin to decipher like what we were using. So I believe that this is not as accurate as it can be. I reached out to Finn, talked to them on the phone, and they said that they can go through from their end of things and double check that 
uh, the right signatures because this uses the vibration of the water. It measures the vibration of the water from each of the sources like the toilet, the sink, washing machine, etc. And that's how it's able to decipher what is what. It's saying, see right now we have 1,468 gallons of uncategorized water use, so it's not exactly sure. Now this is, I believe, like I said, it's a little bit my fault because we ran this thing. We didn't let it really learn. We just, I was more interested in seeing how many gallons we were using versus what the sources are. So I'm going to talk to Finn and see if I can either somehow go through the app and put it into like a learning cycle again, or I'm guessing they can probably do it from their end of things. But if you were to go to specifically, let's say, toilet, you can see the amount of times the toilet's flushed and the gallons that it uses when it flushes. <clears throat> now, that seems like maybe an accurate number of 20 toilet flushes today. Couldn't really tell you, to be honest. But for the most part, that portion of things I think is pretty good. We have the settings page, which is nothing really special. Now, I currently have the auto shut off feature. I have it disabled. And that's because we were having a problem, which was with how much water we were pulling out using the irrigation system, it kept shutting itself off thinking we had a leak, but we knew there was no leak because we were home. Like I said, that also, that reverts back to my problem of, I don't think it's category, categorizing everything correctly, but that's because of the fact that I didn't actually really give it a great chance to learn. And the whole time that it was trying to do the learning process, we were running the outdoor spigot on full blast, which was about like 10 gallons per minute for us because of the well pressure we have. Um, but overall, they have a help menu. I haven't really used this, um, to be honest. I've just called Finn whenever I had something wrong. They were really nice on the phone, um, as well as very knowledgeable about how this worked. The only downside I would say to this that I asked them about is I was really hoping there was a way to export the data somehow into Excel or something like Google Sheets so that I could sort of formulate my own graphs and such from it. And currently they don't support that. The biggest reason being that they said they don't support that because I called and asked about it is because they said it would export all of it as raw data, but it would just, I guess the way the software is set up, it wouldn't export it in a very organized fashion. So you would just have like boatloads of numbers and you wouldn't exactly be sure what everything went to. Um, that's what they said. They said they're looking into it in the future, potentially adding a way that you could export the data. But as of right now, the app has, I guess, built in, built in ways of filtering the data so that it understands what's being sent to it. But if you were to export it, you would get a whole mess of numbers and you wouldn't really know what they mean. But overall, I would say I'm very happy with this. Um, like I said, we went with this because of no subscription service, which is awesome. I don't think you should have to pay a subscription fee, especially when this is already very expensive to begin with. No complaints. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Um, if you've got any questions about the install or more questions about what you're seeing in the app, please feel free to comment. And if not, we'll catch you in the next video.